Suppose you have trained a model which works with images. For clarity, suppose you are working on the problem of image classification. And you want to find out where is the model looking in the input in order to make its classification. You want to find out which parts of the input are more important for the model in order to arrive at its decision. So that is the problem of visual saliency. Given a trained network for images, we want to find out the salient regions in the input. So here is an example of this. Here we can see in the form of a heat map that the model is focusing more on the dog and less on the grass in order to make its classification. This heat map is obtained by a very simple approach which was first introduced in a 2013 paper by Karen Simonian and others from Oxford. Let's say you want to know the saliency with respect to some class C. You pass the input image through your neural network and obtain the score for class C. Score means the value which we get in the output layer just before the softmax. We call that score YC. Now if we take the gradient of YC with respect to the input image, what do we get? We get a matrix with a shape similar to the input image and in that matrix, what is a value close to zero would mean for some particular entry. A value close to zero means that small changes in that particular entry in the input have no effect on determining the output class. And what about values which are high in magnitude either in the positive or in the negative direction? Well, even small changes in that location can have a major impact on the resultant score of class C. Also, in order to obtain a heat map from the gradient of YC with respect to I, we take the absolute value of it and uh, a maximum uh, and a maximum along all its channels. Also, if you're wondering how can we obtain these gradients, well, they can be easily obtained using backpropagation. Instead of backpropagating, backpropagating on the loss, which we do usually, we backpropagate on the score YC. So if they're high in the positive direction, then experiments indicate that they mostly correspond to the location of the object. Uh, while if they're negative, then they mostly correspond to other things like the background and other competing objects. So if you're talking about the saliency with respect to say a cat, the competing object can be a dog. A problem with this approach is that the generated saliency maps are not class discriminative, which means that saliency with respect to different classes overlap a lot with each other. Also, the generated heat maps are often noisy and not very visually appealing. So there are techniques like guided backdrop that zeroes out the negative gradients during the backward pass that produce less noisy results but they are still not class discriminative. So what do we want to do? We want to visually explain the decisions of our model. In order to do that, we want that the saliency maps that we get should be class discriminative. Because if you are asking the model that, hey, uh, you said that there is a cat in this image. So can you tell me where is it? And the model gives back a heat map, highlighting not only the cat but also the dog and perhaps other objects as well, then that is not a very good visual explanation. And secondly, we want that the generated saliency maps to be of high resolution because we want to know the precise location of the salient objects in the input and not visual answers like the stuff on the left is responsible for my output decision. Gradcam produces saliency maps that have both of these properties. So Gradcam is a 2016 CVPR paper by R.R. Selvaraju and others from uh, Professor Dhruv Batra's lab at Georgia Tech that was previously at Virginia Tech. So the full form of Gradcam is gradient weighted class activation mapping because it modified an existing technique known as CAM uh, that is class activation mapping which only worked on a restricted set of CNN type networks. So here we have an image of a cat and a dog. Uh, in the, I mean, we have cat and dog in the same image. 
In the second column, we have the saliency maps obtained from guided backpropagation. So these are guided backpropagation results, which works by zeroing out the negative gradients in the backward pass. Here we can see that this saliency map is not very class discriminative because we asked for the saliency with respect to the class cat, but we also got the portions of the dog's body as the salient parts. Here we see the saliency maps obtained by GRADCAM which are class discriminative but are not of high resolution. Now when we do point wise multiplication between uh, results obtained for guided backprop and grad cam, we get guided grad cam whose results are both class discri discriminative as well as they are of high resolution. Here we see that the occlusion sensitivity generates similar results as that of guided, guided grad cam uh, but guided grad cam is much faster so how does grad cam work we begin by asking the question that how important is some feature map say a for some target class c for this we go back to a gradient approach and we take the gradient of score yc with respect to a and then we take the average of that if this average is positively high that means that a is activated by objects which are important for the class c if the average is close to zero, then A is not really much important in classifying this input to belong to class C. And if the average is negatively high, then it is highly likely that A is activated by competing objects or the background. After obtaining these important weights, uh, importance weights, we take a weighted combination of all the feature maps. We then pass it through a ReLU for reasons which I'll explain soon, and then we get an image that is of the same size as that of these feature maps. So we need to resize that image to get a heat map for the original image. This is where the low resolution of GRADCAM comes in. So it results in coarse heat map because of resizing an image of the same size that, uh, as that of AK. Now why did we apply a ReLU in the previous equation? It's because we are interested only in those features that have a positive influence on the class of interest, which means that we are only interested in those pixels whose intensity should be increased in order to increase YC. Negative pixels are likely to belong to other categories in the image. Without this ReLU function, experiments show that localization maps sometimes highlight more than just the desired class and perform worse at localization. So what are counterfactual explanations? So counterfactuals are those concepts in images whose removal would lead to an increment of the network's confidence about the target class. So let's say we have the same image of cat and dog and the target class is that of a cat. Say there is a category for dog as well. Then a dog is a competing class for a target class. The network's confidence that the entire image is of cat would increase if we remove the dog from it which makes the dog a counterfactual so how can we obtain counterfactual explanations from GRADCAM? well we can flip the signs of the importance weights the features which had a highly negative importance weights earlier which corresponded to competing and background objects will now be given positively high importance weight so here we now have our flipped importance weights and using this as we can see this in this image we get the following counterfactual images so GRADCAM can also be used to see why a network misclassifies some image so here the net network predicts it as a sandbar and we can see from the visual explanation why it says so we can see the highlighted portions of coarse sediment which looks like a sandbar here we can see that the model predicts it to be a car mirror particularly because of the distinctive oval shape and here we can see the highlighted spoon bodies that uh, resemble the shapes of syringes and lastly here the green curvy shape misleads the network to predict it to be a wine snake. So we see how 
grad claim can provide reasonable visual explanations for these misclassifications it's how will grad cam respond in case of an adversarial image if we ask for the real target category in it it turns out grad cam is pretty robust to adversarial noise here we can see that although this image uh, although this image is being classified as an airliner with very high accuracy but when we ask grad cam for a visual explanation for a dog it it returns the right location of it same goes for cat and in these two images we see that for other categories uh, it highlights the background so here if we ask for the location of the airliner it highlights the background and same goes for here as well grad cam can also be used to remove biasness from data sets here the task was to classify images of nurses from images of doctors in the biased data set case we can see that the network focuses on the face to output uh, its decision here we can see here we can see that it focuses on the face if it looks like that the face is more feminine it says that it's a nurse and if it's more masculine it says that it's a doctor so it is biased in that sense but when we remove this bias from the data set we can see that it looks for other features like the white coat uh, it looks for other features like the white coat and the stethos stethoscope to make its prediction in order to evaluate grad cam the authors of this paper can also uh, so also do human evaluation studies here we can see that since we uh, see both the horse and the person in this image the answers to this uh, as we can see here both horse as well as the person the answers to this will most likely not be conclusive so the answers may look like 60% horse and 40% person uh, for example and not like 95% horse so in this way they do the evaluation and reach at the conclusion that grad cam is much more class discriminative than other techniques like guided back propagation here we can see another question uh, related to how reasonable the visual explanations are so many people would say here that robot b is more reasonable than robot a so let's look at some other important uses of grad cam so first of all by naming the concepts that the internal nodes represent and using ideas from the paper network dissection grad cam can also be used to produce textual explanations since grad cam is class discriminative and tells where the target object is it can also be used for weakly supervised localization so this is done by thresholding on the output visual explanation and then choosing the largest possible segment of ones weakly supervised segmentation can also be performed by creating a loss function with constraints like object boundaries should be nice so that the problem of imprecise boundaries can be alleviated other than providing visual cues of object locations in the image using grad cam grad cam can be combined with image captioning models to generate captions based on where the network looks in the image visual question answering models can also be combined with grad cam to not only provide a textual answer to a question given an image but also to provide a visual answer to the question by highlighting the relevant parts in the input so yes in closing i would like to say that grad cam is a really useful cnc approach and it provides really nice visual explanations which are not only class discriminative but also of high resolution when combined with guided backdrop and it's really interesting to see how by explaining the decisions of a model we can also use them to do other tasks like image captioning and localization and really it's like uh, one of the first few steps in generating ai systems that are not only intelligent but also are able to reason about their beliefs and actions that would make them more trustworthy and that increases their utility in the real world okay yeah thanks